He was falsely and wrongfully convicted of a double homicide, which he served 23 years in prison for. And he has just been exonerated. Amen. 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 On, on top of that, this week, the Jackson County prosecutor announced that she plans to pursue no further charges against Mr. Kidd and will not be filing any in the future. I was, he was brought to my attention first by uh, a student organization that's basically a student chapter of the Midwest Innocence Project. And then that's when they asked me to be in, well, be in a play that he wrote from prison. And I said, I don't act, and they said, you are a character all by yourself. <laughs> and uh, they told me what it was for, we were raising money to help uh, for with his case and all that, and when I read his story, I, then I spoke with his, uh, his lead attorney, which was Sean O'Brien, and we had great conversations about it, and when I read all of the, the case uh, information, and I determined that I'd never met him before, but I wanted to be involved. And so he had his final trial a couple of months ago. And they needed some people to enter in some evidence uh, for, for witness. And they called me and said, can you read over all these documents and come and testify? And I said, uh, absolutely, because we brothers. Oh, we ain't never met, but we brothers. Amen. Y'all know what I mean. Right. And we went through the trial and everything, and then the judge eventually determined that Mr. Kidd was innocent and that there was nothing that they could hold him on and order his release. Amen. I, my first time meeting him was after his release. Amen. And he looked at me and he said, I was hoping I got a chance to meet you. And I said, I was hoping I could meet you. Come by the church. Amen. And he is today. Amen. So without further ado, would you hear that call from Mr. Richard Field for the call?
23 years later, I'm 45 years old, and I'm out. And I'm free, and now I'm asking the questions. What happened? What went wrong? How can we make this right? How can we stop other people from being the Ricky kids in the first place? Mm -hmm. And if there is another Ricky kid out there, will it take another 23 years? But when I set that aside and just look at, or look up and ask God, why? Why did I have to go through this? Why did I have to go through this pain? And he shared with me while I was in the belly of such darkness, he said, there's purpose in your pain, Ricky. And so one of the plays I've also uh, done while I was inside prison was called Purpose in Your Pain. And it was about understanding the purpose in our pain. And I just feel like we are all going through some type of pain. Yes, and he and the, and, the, and the pastor touched on it, whether it's cancer, whether it's addiction, whether it's alcoholism, whether it's somebody is in a prison somewhere, somehow, and wondering how they're going to get through and is wondering, can they get through? Can they make it out? And the question I have to, uh, the answer to the question is yes. Yes, you can. Yes, he will bring you out. He brought me through it, and he brought me to it. And I'm so grateful, and I give all praises and glory to God. Um, you know, there's a scripture I want to read in Psalms 27, 14. For people, it took me 23 years. And I don't know how long you've been going through your ordeal and your situation. It could be two days, two weeks, two years. How many are still waiting on God for something? Yeah. I'm still, I'm here and I'm still waiting on God for something. Um, but in Psalms 27, 14, it says, I love this scripture. It says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, yeah. and he shall strengthen your heart. Yeah. Wait, I say. Yeah. On the Lord. Yeah. And you know, the first 10 years I was reaching out to any and everybody, churches, organizations, lawyers, asking them, will you help me? And, and I got the cold shoulder and the blind eye. 50 letters would go out, maybe two or three come back in, and they would say, there's nothing I can do for you. And I'll put another 50 in the mail. And I remember the guys used to laugh at me because those were stamps. And they say, man, you wasting them stamps. Ain't nobody going to listen to you. I said, one day they will. Yeah. And I just kept doing it. And I just kept on doing it. It took 10 years. From 97, 96 I was charged. 97 I was convicted. 2007 I got my first response. But I stayed faithful for 10 years. Wow. Putting those letters in the box. Wow. And I was excited. Professor Sean O'Brien and the Midwest Innocence Project, they came on board and said, you know what, I believe you, and we're going to take your case. And I'm thinking, I'll be home in a jiffy. I thought that's how it works now that I had legal representation and 10 years had gone by, and if we're doing the math, this is 2019. But that's why this scripture is so important, and that's why I'm sharing with you guys to wait on the Lord. And so it was 2008 that they really kind of got my facts together. And I went into court in 2009, my first hearing, 10 years ago, and we produced this solid evidence of the facts that I didn't do it and the evidence of exactly who did do it and, and how it all came to play and it was time to go home and uh, I just declared and decreed in the name of Jesus that I was going home and told my family, expect me to be home and how did you go home? We had a hearing, and due to technicalities of the law, I was denied relief. And then we went to the next appeal. It took me about a day or two, 24, 48 hours, and I got right back up, and I said, you know what? I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that this next time we're going to win, that this court is going to see that we are speaking the truth, that we're going to be able to push past technicalities and difficulties, and, and I'm coming home. Nikki, my sister who's with me today, who's been there with me this whole time. I'm coming home, Nikki. And I was denied again. I was denied a total of 11 times wow. in 23 years before relief was actually granted. But I tell you, 
according to scripture. And my testimony, wait on the Lord. He will strengthen you. And so, the governor, Eric Greitman, Missouri's governor, and, two, and there's so many, and I won't share them all, but one I want to share with you. Um, the governor, Eric Greitman, I put in a clemency as well. And they said he was considered. He was on his way out the door. They had ran him out the door. And on his June 1st, I declared a decree that, that he was going to give me clemency. I just believed that God was going to show up wherever an opportunity was there. And so uh, I was at Crossroads Correctional Center, and they had had a riot on the other side, and we was locked down for nine months. Uh, yeah, we was locked down for nine months. My cellie had transferred out, no, not, not, no involvement with the riot, but they was transferring people. And I was in the cell by myself, and I was tired, folks. I was tired. I was ready to go. I was ready to see God's hand in the full manifestation that resulted in my release, and and I watched on the news that Eric Wright was leaving in a week. I said, he going to cut me loose. Now, I hadn't talked to my lawyers. I had been locked down, and we had no real communication unless it was some type of emergency. But they woke me up Friday morning, June 1st, the day he was to leave office. And they said, report to the back. Now, I forgot all about the fact that he was leaving and, and that what I was expecting God to do. And they called me to the back, and they said, you got a legal call. And another guy sit there, and he said, you got a legal call, too. Hmm. So I sat there, I'm thinking his lawyer's calling him and my lawyer's calling me, but I'm listening to them and they said the same person is about to call us. And I thought about it, great. I said, you put in for a clemency? He said, yeah, my lawyer put in for a clemency. I said, who's your lawyer? I said, who's your lawyer? I said, well, it ain't our lawyers. I said, we couldn't go back. They fed us lunch right there. We sat there from 10.30 to 3.30, waiting on a call. And I said, this is the government. He said, you think so? I said, yeah, I feel it. Man. Who else would be calling both of us at the same time? And it's not my lawyer. It's not your lawyer. And we can't leave. And the caseworker was standing there. It was You could tell it was something of importance. I said, this is the government, brother. We going home. And we just started praising God. And we just started giving God the glory. And we started crying and just right there having church right there in the back of the caseworker's office. And the caseworker's looking and he said, you think you guys is going home? You think that's what it is? I said, I definitely know that's what it is. And he just smiled. And, and so he said, well, we'll see. Because you guys do got a call coming. I said, let me ask you, is it from the same person? He said, yes, it is. I said, we going home. <laughs> we going home. And so uh, the call finally came in. And it was very great. And you could hear his office was just in the air shop. How you doing, Mr. Governor? Yes, I have Mr. Alvis Williams right here. Yes, I'll put them on. He said, but I also have Mr. Kent right here, too. And I can't hear the other side. He said, yes, sir. I'll put Mr. Alvis Williams on the phone. And Alvis went in there. And I'm crying still. Just, the, God, God, you did it. You did it. It's Friday. I'm thinking about, I'm going to surprise my family. And, and they're going to be so happy to see me. And, and Alvis went in there. And uh, he was, thank you, Mr. Governor. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Governor. And, uh. Um, he, came, he came right back to the seating area where I was sitting at, and caseworker overhearing him saying, "Yeah, I got Mr. Kid here too. Do you need to talk to him?" Oh no. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, my face changed, and the tears, the joy, the tears were still streaming, but they changed for a whole different reason. I was. And the caseworker came to the door and he said, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, and I tried to put on my strong face and uh, I said, it's okay. It's okay. He said, uh, hold on right there, Mr. Williams. I need you to go with me because he was being released right there in the evening. And he told the officer, can, can you escort this kid back to his cell, please? And uh, took me back to my cell, and I just cried. And I cried 
And then I cried out to God. Why? Does the door keep shutting in my face? You know I'm innocent. You know my truth. All my supporters. The state is not even arguing that I'm not innocent. What type of America are we living in? What type of system am I under? Is this United States of America or a third world country? God, are you real? And I cried, and, 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 and uh, later that night, that small, still voice, how many of you know about that small, still voice? Yes, he came to me, and he said, be patient. I got you. All right. Hey. And the next day, I woke up as if it never happened. Mm -hmm. So the caseworker was so concerned, he came by my door the next day, he said, Mr. Kidd, are you okay? I was in a good mood. I said, yeah, how you doing? Man? He took a step back, the window that you could look in. He, he said, you okay? Baby thought I was delirious. You just got dealt a heck of a blow yesterday. I said, oh, I'm fine. He said, you sure? I said, yes, sir. He said, how so? I said, because I was about to explain it to him, but I don't think he was a man of God. And it was between me and my God. And, I said, I'm good, thank you. Turned my back to him. A couple seconds later, he had walked away. But the scripture says, wait on the Lord. Yeah. And it also, it didn't just say wait on the Lord. It also said, be of good courage. Yeah. And then it says, and he shall strengthen your heart. Yeah. And then it repeats, wait, I say, yeah. on the Lord. Yeah. And that's what he did. And so I just continued to press. I know Paul talks about it in the Bible that we should press towards the mark of the higher call. So I just pressed, you know. Prison has a lot of depressing things. And, and you got to just have the courage and the gall and the full with all the press. Yeah. And I just pressed. Yeah. And the time ticked. And the time came. And God answered. You know, they tried a real trick. I got to tell you this because I got to tell you what God can do. This isn't my story. This is your story, too. Because right. God will do it. So the state, I was down in Jackson County, where I fell out of. We filed a motion down there in front of a judge, Judge Miss Kiff in Division One, And during my pre-hearing status, she said to my lawyers, in so many words, I'm about to send this guy home next week. He's been in your way too long. And so the state attorney general took a step back and went and got on a secret red phone or something and made a call to the Missouri Supreme Court and said she don't even have jurisdiction to see the case. Suddenly, wow. suddenly she don't have jurisdiction? You ain't said that before, but she just told you that she about to do the wrong, the right thing and you too busy in your mind trying to do the wrong thing. Right. So I chuckled it off when they said he was gonna do it. My lawyers came to visit me in the county jail and all three of them showed up at the same time. I said, uh-oh. They said, Ricky, they just filed a stay, a prohibition. The judge can't do anything on your case. She can't rule. She can't have the hearing until they sort out whether she has jurisdiction or not. And I said, well, how long will that last? He said, probably another nine months after we get done arguing that. And I said, oh, I don't have another nine months. I'm ready to go. He said, I know, but just be patient and, and hang in there. And, Sometimes lawyers are good lawyers, but they're not good counselors, right? So you gotta seek the real counsel, right? And this word here, this word, this word right here. Uh, so long story short, they the, the courts or the state prevailed and sent me back to Cameron, Missouri. They said, well, that's where you technically reside. I was in Jackson County briefly on the DNA when we filed it. You was only here for a couple of days, so that don't count. I know the rules said that, but that don't count. Go back out there to where you are most likely to lose. Never, never land. Where there's remnants of the Ku Klux Klan just trading their white robes in for black robes. And take your chances out there. That's what they did. I'm just telling you the truth. Right, uh, right. Those rural counties, they're not trying to do nothing out there for you. So they didn't mind the jurisdiction. They just knew that these Jackson County judges were more inclined to do the right thing. And so we got back out there, and 
I was nervous. But as the pastor said, you're safe yeah. in unity yeah. when you're with God. Yeah. Right. And so it just pushed my nerves away, and I just declared the decree one more time that I'm going home. They said, Ricky, these judges are rough out here. And uh, so now I'm going to encourage him to shop. And he'll tell you. I said, well, you know what? I'm not worried about that. He said, why so? Or how so? I said, my God. Yeah. My God. Yeah. He said, yeah, well, I hear you. He kind of hit my hand. And, and I think he's a man of God, too. But I don't think his faith was as strong as mine that day. <laughs> uh, how are we going to win out here? And long story short, we did. Yeah. Judge Aaron Atkins. Yeah. Where they thought we was, they set us up for a loss. Hey. And they lost. Hey. Hey. Huh? The yeah. word says that he'll make your enemy your footstool. Yeah. He said, the word says what they meant for evil. Yeah. He'll make good come out of it. Yeah. They pulled a trick. Yeah. Trying to pull the wool over our head. and got the wool pulled down. out there to lose and set me up to win. Yeah. And so I'm here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here. It's an honor to be here. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, God told me when I was inside to uh, share a word and share a testimony. Tell them that I'm still in the miracle business. Yeah. Tell them against all lies that still lies when you're with me. Yeah. Tell them that whatever they're going through that I can do it for them too. You see, mine took 23 years. Usually, trouble don't last that long. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. And so I just want to encourage you. Whatever you're going through today, yeah. trouble don't last that long. Right, right, right. If you just wait yeah. on the Lord. Yeah. If you just be of good courage to strengthen your heart and bring you to where it is you're trying to go. He did it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I know he'll do it for you. God bless you. Thank you for having me here.